This month on The Card Life, presented by Pristine Auction. So that rarity to me was what drove me to that. And as I started studying that more, the interest was never there to want to open it. This 52 Tops mantle is the nicest I've ever had the honor of grading. It became like a clubhouse thing. The boxes didn't make it out to the stadium. They were getting opened in the clubhouse, and it was fun. Welcome to another episode of The Card Life. I'm your host, Matt Strom. This month, we're talking sports cards in the Hawkeye State. We've got a great lineup of the stories in the state of Iowa. On this episode, we're talking sports cards across the state of Iowa. We'll start with a lifelong cattle farmer who has become a collector and seller of vintage unopened packs and boxes. We'll stop by a brand new card shop in Council Bluffs, go in depth with CSG on the grading of a 1952 Mickey Mantle card, open a box that contains the first pro card of a future Iowa Cubs star, and look back at a great year of stadium pulls with my Red Sox teammates. Kurt Christensen is a sixth generation cattle farmer that lives just outside Spencer, Iowa, population 11,300. When you grow up in that, um, you know, kind of gets into your blood, and um, I, I enjoy it. A lot of work at times, but it's rewarding. A lifetime card collector, Christensen started to gain an interest in vintage cards after college. Met a few people through some early Facebook card groups 10 years ago when some of those Facebook groups were just starting, and but that kind of piqued my interest a little bit, and that got me into some of the unopened material which is where my passion is. 66 Batman cello pack with the Batman on top. Of all the items I own, that's my favorite item. It'll be the last item I ever sell. Unopened refers to a segment of the hobby that collects unopened packs or boxes of cards. Christensen started his unopened collection in a deal with a gentleman from New Jersey, selling vintage packs of Kurt's lifelong team, the Minnesota Twins. Had some 1961 and 1962 baseball cello packs with twins players showing uh, on the tops and backs of the packs. So that was my first big purchase. I knew well, I could have a 62 tops Karma Killigrew card. I, I have a couple, um, but I never seen the cello pack with him on top. So that rarity to me was what drove me to that. And as I started studying that more, I started realizing how rare that stuff was. The interest was never there to want to open it. Um, once I understood how rare they were, I never really had any temptations to opening that type of stuff. 72 football, 74 basketball. It's a, there's a 81 cello pack with Ozzy Smith on top. The unopened community has three tiers of collectors. Those like Kurt, who buy packs to keep them in their collection unopened. There are, of course, people who purchase the packs to open them, and yet another group that collects packs with certain cards showing. It really happened in the last 18 months as the amount of money being paid for star pack items, whether it's on top of a rack pack or a cello pack, or even a wax pack that has a player showing on back. And it can be for 60s items, 70s, even 80s items. A friend of mine, he put together a set, 88 Topps Baseball. Ooh, y'all can make fun of 88 Topps Baseball, but it's affordable. Um, and his goal was to get every single player in the checklist, 792 cards, on top of cello packs. So he has an 88 Topps Baseball set with every card on top of the cello pack. So that's a pretty unique, and it was very tough to uh, accomplish that. So that's a, a 55 Topps Baseball Wax Pack, five cent pack. But you can see there the gum powder. Um, you see the little outline there? There's a little black coming down through here. That was where the gum was originally, and then how it was stored, it just disintegrated. So there's just all this powder everywhere. Um, the pack is 100% good. About five years ago, Christensen started the company ripping vintage packs from his farm in Iowa. 
RVP sells vintage packs and boxes, does junk wax breaks, and even authenticates. It got to the point where a lot of my customers were asking me, you know, why don't I authenticate things? When that, uh, say those middle months of 2020 hit, I mean, I had, had so much product being sent my way um, to authenticate because the demand was huge. And, you know, that really brought the RVP name out way more than I ever intended. It was only ever intended to help me sell my own stuff. After the break, Kirk Christensen provides some tips for checking unopened vintage packs and boxes. Nice and crisp, snug, and all the angles are pretty much the same. PristineAuction.com, it's baseball stuff, it's basketball, it's wrestling, it's Marvel stuff. Tatis, Patrick Mahomes, Wayne Gretzky, LeBron James, autographed Anika Adidas jersey, Mookie Betts, Muhammad Ali. Personal favorite thing on the site are the 10 minute auctions. You can bid on the item for only 10 minutes. Highest bidder wins. It's free to register, free to bid. Sign up today, pristineauction.com. Pristine Auction is a proud sponsor of The Card Life. Head over to pristineauction.com where over 10,000 sports card auctions end every week. Let's head back to Spencer, Iowa, where Kirk Christensen of Ripping Vintage Packs has some tips for examining whether unopened packs or boxes are authentic. Because there's people out there that their specific intention is to reseal packs. The biggest thing to look for, the easiest thing I like to look for, corner folds. So I like to pull the pack on its side. Where these packs are folded in the corners, they should be really snug against the pack. Um, they might not be uniform, but they, they should be snug. And then if it feels just loose, like if you pick up this pack and it's just, there's, there's a lot of movement to it, that's a sign, hey, it may be off. We all talk about roller marks. They're hard to see. So when this pack was sealed, this is Opeechee, they would have had a machine come and went right across the pack and it would have sealed the flap across. So I'm, you can see traces of that roller mark that go across. If I open that pack, there's a line that goes right across both flaps and there's a line right across. They've got to match up. Some of you resealing or faking packs, hard to match up those two lines as well as getting you know the corner folds all nice and snug. Once you've opened the pack, um, we'll go and open a pack because we can open 83 Tops Video City. The thing you want to look for is where that flap opened up, by which we call the wax side, a lot of times that back card should have a little wax on it. And it should match up with where it was sealed over. As I pull that open, these are those corners that I'm talking about how you've got that just beautiful, sharp angle all the way through there. That's nice and there's no wrinkles, no creases on there. You open up a bad pack, a lot of these you'll see full, you know, wrinkles and creases all through there. Well, it's not good. So as far as box wise, a uh, couple easy signs to look for. If you don't have a lot of knowledge, this is an 82 FLIR baseball box. First thing I like to look at, the overall tightness and uniformity of what you see. If you just pull out the first stack and packs are kind of shuffled around or a lot of wrinkles showing, that can be a telltale sign. The other thing that's nice to see, and I'll sh show you here. So I pulled out that stack, let's get the rest of that stack. A good clean box, not always, but hard to fake. If you get tilted in, this, in the light, you can see right down the size, there's little indents on every one of these packs. All those indents match up. That's a sign that you know, the packs may be original to the box. As if I'm buying a box, that's a sign that maybe all those packs are original to the box. Does, if those didn't line up, it doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. It just means maybe they weren't original to the box. Now, this is an 85 football box. and I pull up the whole stack. I love doing this. When I authenticate a box, I like pulling the whole stack out, setting it down, and I can see right there on those corner folds that I talked about. Nice and crisp, snug, and all the angles are pretty much the same. The best thing I can say is know who you're buying from. 
If you think anything is off, you just will pass. I was at the National this last year in Atlantic City and was floating around uh, when I got out of my booth looking at a lot of 70s packs, you know, raw packs if you know, we're trying to buy. If we're talking 70s material, um, say 72 through 78, from what I saw at last year's National, probably 90% bad. It's disheartening. I don't think they were intentionally trying to sell anything yeah. bad. They just didn't know. Do the research on the seller end. Because chances are, if you have an issue, and it comes from a reputable seller, you'll be able to you know, work, work through that issue. Coming up, we go inside the grading of the most iconic card in hobby history. The surface was near flawless. The color is exceptional. It's just, it's a piece of art. months ago, CSG had the opportunity to grade a near mint version of a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle. CSG Vice President Andy Broom has some details on some things you may not know about this legendary card. Today I want to share with you a very exciting and special card that we just recently graded. The iconic 1952 Topps number 311 Mickey Mantle. And it is valued at more than two million dollars. Now, while not a rookie, this is his first Topps card, and Topps made a huge splash with the 52 design. This particular example graded a near mint to mint eight. Now, it's on a scale of one to 10, but when we're talking 52 Topps mantles, eight's a very high grade. What impressed me the most was the surface of this card. Seeing the card out of the holder, the surface was near flawless. The color is exceptional. It's just, it's a piece of art. It's a beautiful card to look at. Now you probably know the mystery and the legend behind the 52 top set and how they were designed and then after the season when the cards, the high series didn't sell, they were loaded onto a garbage barge and dumped into the East River. Now we don't know 100% if that's true, but it just adds to the mystique of the set. One thing you might not have known though is that the Mickey Mantle card is actually double printed. You'll see that sometimes when the card's listed there'll be a DP after the description of the card. Now what double print means is when the 1952 Topps high numbers were printed, they were printed on 100 card sheets. There weren't 100 different designs to fill out the sheet, so some of the cards, including the Mickey Mantle, were double printed, meaning there were two cards on the same sheet. Now 1952 was long before we had Photoshop or any other type of graphic design software, so the designs were actually hand cut and hand built. We graded two of the 1952 Topps Mantle cards, uh, the eight that we, you see here, and also a four or five. Here at CSG, we have decided to list the type on the label, the type one and the type two. When we look at the front of the card, we look at the Mickey Mantle, and we look at his printed signature. The type one card, on the E of Mantle, we see that it curves upwards. And when we look at the type two, the E does not curve upwards. It's actually cut off at the end. The second area to look at is the Yankees logo. Now the Type 1 has a solid black border around the logo, while the Type 2 is missing the bottom border. And we look at the marquee of Mickey Mantle's name, the border of stars around his name, we can see that there's a the big difference between the Type 1 and Type 2. We'll call it the star box. Uh, we'll see that there's a solid border around the top of the star box. And if we look at the Type 2, we can see it appears jagged. Now, if we look at the back of the card, let's look at the card number, which is 311. The card number design is inside of a baseball. On the Type 1, the stitches point to the left. On the Type 2, the stitches point to the right. And we'll also notice on the Type 2 that the stitches are bolder than the Type 1. And finally, while we're on the back of the card, and we look at the top line here where it says Joe DiMaggio's. If we'll notice on the S of DiMaggio's, and we look just above it to the word right, we see that the S lines up under the H of right. This is on a type one card. Now the text on the type two card is slightly shifted, and so we see that same S of DiMaggio now line up under the T of right. My 24 years of professional grading, you know, this 52 Tops Mantle is the nicest I've ever had the honor of grading. 
Uh, the surface is just flawless and all original. Uh, I can't state enough of how beautiful this card is. And for CSG to have the, the opportunity to grade such a beautiful card, you know, it's an honor and a privilege. CSG is proud to be the official grading partner of the Card Life. CSG's world-class expertise and state-of-the-art technology provide collectors with accurate, consistent, affordable, and fast grading. Learn more at csgcards.com. Up next, we visit an Iowa LCS and hunt for a future Iowa Cub in a special edition set. I like the design. Like the gold part of it, like just the borders of the gold is reflective. Oh my goodness, that is a Tom Brady autograph. Oh, oh my, one of one diamond Lamella Ball rookie. That's a hit. Wow, that's a big card, guys. Oh, quarterback Joey Burrow. Yes, please, out of the first box. Oh, oh sick. Mike Trout's on card autograph 9.5, autograph grade 10. Des Moines has served as the AAA home of the Iowa Cubs for more than four decades. One player that will likely be playing in Principal Park soon is the Cubs' 16th overall pick in the 2020 draft, Ed Howard. Howard was one of 15 black players taken during the five-round 2020 draft who appear in the Parkside Negro League Centennial Draft Set. Produced in partnership with the Negro League Baseball Museum in Kansas City to honor the 100th anniversary of the league's founding, each player is shown in a Negro Leagues uniform that they would have worn if they were born before the integration of baseball. Only 1,500 sets were created with each box including the complete set, one autographed card, and the chance to pull short print colored variations. Alrighty, so let's get into a box of this Centennial Draft Class 2020. I like the design. Like the gold part of it, like just the borders of the gold is reflective. The actual gold's not. Ooh, we got Ed Howard autograph. Sweet. He was like, what was he? 16th oh overall pick. Wainwright. Tucker. Hence. And we got Jones the fourth. Isaiah Green. Right on. I like the design of them though. My name is Joshua Jones and I own Limitless Affordable Cards here in Council Bluffs, Iowa. On June 1st, 2022, me and my brother took the plunge of opening up our our own first shop here in town. In Counts Bluffs here, we haven't had a shop in over 25 years. I wanted our shop to be unique, a place to hang out. I wanted a place where it could be neutral between old and new, so everyone can have fun in this hobby because there's growth in, in the hobby, new and old. When I first opened my own pack at nine years old, I absolutely loved and enjoyed every single minute of it. This is a dream to own my own shop, just to grow in the community and see where things go, because you, you put the effort in and it, it will show. Oh my goodness, that is a Tom Brady autograph. Oh, oh my, one of one diamond Lamella Ball rookie. That's a hit. Wow, that's a big card, guys. Oh, quarterback Joey Burrow. Yes, please, out of the first box. Oh, oh sick. Mike Trout's on card autograph 9.5, autograph grade 10. A new year for me out in Boston, new team, uh, unbelievable experience, could could talk for hours on all of that, but as far as cards go and stadium pulls, just want to highlight 
how amazing my teammates were with cards and how, how they all kind of bought into it and became like a, I don't know, it became like a clubhouse thing. I honestly didn't shoot as many stadium pulls as I would have liked to because the boxes didn't make it out to the stadium. They were getting opened in the clubhouse and uh, honestly, I enjoyed it a lot. Machado. I'm getting to see the guys get excited over a $20 card that they had no idea what the value is, but it's just a cool legendary player's name or something. It was, uh, it was fun. Jaron Duran. These cards are sick and I think they'd even, I mean, it's gonna look really sick when he uh, slaps an auto on there. Some of my favorite moments definitely were breaking with Tanner Houck out in uh, Los Angeles there at the Angel Stadium. We are gonna hunt his rookie card in uh, Stadium Club Chrome. So if uh, you haven't seen this, this box, they have sick photos and uh, Tanner's is actually pretty dope. So uh, hopefully we pull it. If it's the non-auto, he'll sign it and we'll give it away to one of y'all. If it's the auto, he's gonna keep it because he's never opened cards and uh, that'd be sick to hit his own auto in his first card opening. Probably my favorite moment from that entire break was when, <laughs> so we were shooting it and he pulls a Rafi card. And as he sets the Rafi card down, he looks up and where the player's entrance is in the right field line, Rafi is walking across the field and he takes the camera and he's like, oh, there's Rafi right there. Stadium, right over Stadium there. pulls turn to uh, live, action, live action, showing up to the ballpark <laughs> for the day. And he enjoyed the break and we were actually fortunate enough to hit one of his own cards. So that was, that was really cool. Oh! oh. Back to back, let's go! Yo, bro, your picture in this is so sick. That is sick. That was from my uh, first start in Fenway. Yes, sir. So, hey, during guy, 2020. Tanner, Tanner will sign this card and we will give it away. 100%. If he wants it, I'll buy another one for him off eBay. No, for sure, he'll <laughs> give this away for you. But yes, that is sick. Here we had Rich Hill, Ryan Brazier, Deekman. I believe Austin Davis was out in right field in Fenway breaking at uh, the red chair out there in right field. That was that was sweet and a huge thanks to Deekman. He uh, he supplied the boxes for that break. He uh, As soon as he found out what you could hit in some of those boxes, he was all about buying them. Big lotto ticket guy, I guess you could say, but he was he was into it and it was fun. Ooh, Carlton. Look at that patch. Seven to 25, right on. As far as cards go and what hits I had, I honestly, they kind of all morphed together with what we hit in the clubhouse and I can't really remember what we have on camera, but one of my favorite hits of the year was uh, the Juan Soto out of Topps Finest flashback. Um, that was a really cool card. Uh, the first Juan Soto auto I have in my collection. So that was cool to add that. Wow. Oh my goodness. That is sick. To 50, I believe. Oh shoot, to 15. Definitely gonna, gonna make that a, a point this year in Philly is to, to get my breaks in and, and to share with you guys what, uh, what awesome views we have in those stadiums and where I'm very fortunate enough to get to break some cards. You know, I work out with Brandon Marsh here in Arizona in the off season and I bring cards to him all the time asking him if he wants them and if he doesn't want them, if he mind signing them for me. So I always give him the option, if you want it, you can have it. But if you don't want it, you mind signing it for me. But you know, hopefully we can get Marsh uh, to open some packs and see if we can hit a rookie card of his or two, but hopefully it spreads in the clubhouse. And again, baseball cards make me feel like I'm 12 years old again. So uh, I can only imagine that it's, it's gonna make others feel that way too.